All right, so you already learned how to do the method one, and now you want to learn the method two so that you can create these types of images to into your funnels. Let's go ahead and understand how you can do this. Now, before we get into the technical aspect, remember, it's very, very important that you create images around meaning, context, and uh, emotion, okay? So you are gonna build an image based on these three. Why? Because images are there to support the message of your copy. So if you have copy, then you can use visuals to enhance the meaning, to enhance the emotion, so that the user is able to, to generate the feeling much, much quicker. Okay, so for example, let's say that we want to create uh, an image for a program like Kids Programming, okay? So we, we have a course, we're gonna help kids on how to learn how to program, okay? On how to code. So we want to make sure that we're going to select something around that. So let's go ahead and do kid using a computer. Okay. Now we have all these images. How do we actually select the best image for that? Very, very simple. It might take some time. It's very, very simple. You want to understand one, the resolution of the picture, if it's going to be um, a good fit for what you are trying to build. So for example, if you want to create a picture that is square, is this picture good for a square Resolution. Yes, it is. Awesome. If you're trying to build a picture that is horizontal, is this picture good for horizontal? No, it's not because we just see the, the, the face. We don't really see the computer. Okay. Uh, so you kind of want to understand this resolution that's going to be implemented the image in. Okay. Now, the next part is going to be the emotion. So the kid here is using the computer, right? Here as well, but she's writing something. So maybe she's learning from the computer here as well. And, and as you go, you try, you try to understand, you try to see that some of these um, might be more towards what you are looking for. So this one maybe, you see? So there's a lot of different uh, pictures here and some of them might not be even a good fit. So for example, okay? For example, let's say you have this picture here. This is a cool picture, why? Because she's working in a computer she has glasses, so she kind of look, looks a little bit nerd, like a little bit like a student, right? So it's a good picture for the message of learning how to program, how to code. But if you go a little bit back, right, and you see this picture instead, we still have a kid in a computer, but now he's sleeping, okay? So for example, if you want to use this picture, it would not, it would not be for how exciting it is to go from A to B and then learn everything. It would be something like, if you, if you are tired of your kid falling asleep in every single um, course that you buy on how to learn how to code, um, don't worry. Our course is built uh, to recognize their learning patterns. So our courses are um, fast to watch, are engaging, are dynamic, and they are built in a way that your kid or your, you know, uh, your kid will um, never feel tired. It will be really, really fun to go through all those courses. Of course, you can change the copy and, and make it a little bit better. This is just an example. So this could be for a negative emotion for someone like uh, us versus them. And this will be something for, let me see if I can find it. Uh, this other one would be something around uh, the positive aspects of our program. So let's go ahead and download this picture. Again, you can download any of the other pictures that you see here. Just try to make sure that it fits what you're looking for. Another aspect is the age of the kids, by the way. So here, uh, this guy here is around maybe 14 years old. So it's a teenager. And these ones are a little bit um, younger. So the age of your kid is also going to be important. So if you, your program is going to be for people around six years old, you're going to go for something around this, maybe a little bit younger. If you're going to go for 14 years old, maybe you're going to go for something like, you know, this picture here. Okay, so make sure, I'm uh, actually going to go ahead and download this one, uh, for example. And uh, yeah, make sure that you understand these three concepts of message, meaning, and then emotion. Now, next part is going to be um, adding the image right there, okay? So we just have our image right there. Cool? Awesome. Now, next is we need a shape, right? So shape. 
So in this case, shapes, you can use rectangles, can use ellipses, whatever. I don't really recommend using polygons or stars because those are a little bit, you know, less cool. So ellipses and shapes very rarely, uh, very rarely go wrong. So I'm going to just add a shape there. And then I'm going to be using this one uh, for colors as well. So, and I'm going to add a color of like this blue maybe. Okay, so we have this petrol blue. Okay, so we have a shape, we have a color, we have a picture. Now let's put everything together, shall we? Let's go ahead and do the technical aspect of it. So the first thing is the picture should be within the uh, the shape, okay? So the shape should be b behind the picture that we want to use. Then we need to select both, right click, and then we need to use it as mask. So now we have a mask right here. So if you want to change how it looks, you need to double click and now you have the image select. You see how it changed from this one, double click to this one. So now you can make it bigger, make it smaller. You can turn it around. Okay. You can do all kinds of things. You can adjust that. Okay. So now with this, let me just go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. So it fits there and there we go. It's centered. It's cool. You have the key. He's smiling emotion. He's using a computer meaning. So it looks, everything looks cool. The next part is going to be adding a gradient. You see here, we have a shape, we have an image. Now we can add a gradient and maybe we even add a little bit shadow there. So let's go ahead and do that. If we click once, we are in the mask. If we click twice, we are in the picture. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to add a shape. And in this case, I'm going to add a rectangle. We're going to add a shape. And this shape, if you can see, it's outside of the masks. So we need to control or command X, double click, double click again, paste it. And now it's inside the mask. And now what we need to do is we need to go to the fill color, click on gradient, select this one color, click there on the color, go to the um, color picker, or if you want to do, you can just press I, and then click on the color that you wanted to use. You repeat the process, click I, and then you select, uh, sorry, color picker, and then you select the same color. If you want to do a little bit of a gradient, you can pick this, and then drag it a little bit down. So now you have a slight gradient. And then you go to the first one and you make these, for example, 20%. So there's a good opacity there, or maybe even 10%, okay? Now, the next part is going to be, you know, rotating gradient, if you want to rotate it. Uh, you know, you can adjust as, you, as you, you prefer. You can do manually as well. You can make, make it more apart. You can make it uh, closer together. So there's a lot of these different uh, hacks, you know, uh, sort of say. So yeah, you can go ahead and if you want, you can even make it lower. So it starts and ends sooner. You can do all the different things. Uh, another thing you can do if you want to, you can add another color here, which is in between. And you can even change it to color there if you want to. But anyway, um, right here, it looks, looks pretty good, right? Looks pretty good. So press uh, outside of that and there we go. You have your shape. Now what you don't have is a shadow. So we click on the mask. We go to effects. We get drop, drop shadow. We click here. We make sure that the blur is bigger. Just make it a bigger blur. And now the X and the Y play with it a little bit. Maybe not too much. And now here what we want to do is you want to select the same color and you probably can do around 20% or 30% opacity. You want to play around with that. So X a little bit less. Okay. Just add a little bit of shadow there to add an extra no part of more volume. Let's call it that way. Now the next part would be adding effects, adding text. So, uh, Mr. or student, uh, I don't know, like John, let's call it John Stewart, whatever. Okay. And then you can go for the type, uh, the type, the, the type of fonts, the fonts that you want to do. So let's go for this one. So we select enter. We go for that one. Uh, if you want to make it bigger, we can make it bigger. But let me go ahead and do that. Here, make it bigger. Uh, make it white. And now adjust it here. Make it bigger as well. So here, make it bigger. Okay, John Stewart. Okay, and then you can start adding some shapes like a star. And this star can be yellow or orange. You just add it 
or like like so okay and then you, you clone it a few times shift D you select them control G to group make them smaller with shift then you edit here shift and alt okay you can start building your images this way so these are very very simple tricks that you can use uh, to go around the entire image and then you just add your text right there okay so that's how you can use the method too uh, very very simple they look amazing uh, and these are you know specific examples that you can utilize to make your funnel look clean good uh, professional and uh, it doesn't take too much of your time like in less than five minutes or ten minutes uh, in less than five minutes i built this image right so let's go ahead practice a lot and um, never forget images are around the meaning the message and um, the emotion behind it